that awkward moment when you completely abandon your YouTube subscribers with absolutely no explanation for several months. My bad, you guys. Hi! I missed you so much. I hope you guys missed me. I'm back. If you need a reminder, my name is Mina. Welcome to my channel, Mina Reads. I want to bring you guys my mid-year freakout tag, even though it is going to be very, very, very fashionably late. I think it's a great way to just do an overview of the reading year and we definitely desperately need that here on the channel since I haven't been making content consistently and I want to let you guys know what I've been reading and what I've been loving and what I've been hating and all that stuff in between. I'm very excited that you're watching. Thank you so much to everyone who was a real one who held me down while I was out. So I love you. I appreciate you. I am back and I don't know if I would say I'm better, but I'm excited to be talking to you guys about everything that I've been reading this year and all my thoughts and all my feelings. I do just have to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Book of the Month. Book of the Month is an amazing online subscription service for readers. How it works is that their team scouts the most interesting new releases that are coming out in a given month and they give you a curated selection of five to seven titles to choose from. I love Book of the Month because they have incredible prices for hardcover fiction. Hardcovers are so expensive these days and Book of the Month is definitely the most bang for your buck way to get a new released hardcover. I really love their selections. It's definitely a good way I think to get into new genres as well because they scout some of the most interesting and like hyped titles in literary fiction, historical fiction, thrillers, horror, fantasy. So it's really a little bit of something for everything that you want to try and it could be a great way to get those recommendations if you need help discovering your next read. I also love the fact that Book of the Month they are switching things up a little bit so they do also have an audiobook option so if you would like to use your monthly credit for an audiobook instead of a hardcover you can do that and I love that as an audiobook reading girly myself. I just think Book of the Month is an amazing way to discover new books at affordable prices and to get them conveniently delivered right to your doorstep in this pretty blue box. So I would highly recommend checking them out. And this month, if you use the link in my description and use the code Firefly, you can get your first box for $9.99. My Book of the Month picks this month were The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. This is a queer second chance summer romance. And A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. Kingfisher. It's about this girl who is being controlled by her mother who has this really sinister magic that forces her to be obedient it kind of reminds me of Ella Enchanted in a way and I think both of these will be really fun books to get into this August so I want to say a huge thank you to book of the month for sponsoring this video and let's get into the mid-year freak out tag okay so question number one the best book that I've read in 2024 thus far without a doubt has to be Icarus by Kate Ancrum I love Kate Ancrum's writing style so much and I feel almost as if her novels were crafted specifically for me in a lab like somebody is studying my brain and pulling out everything that I could possibly want and need in a story to feel just irrevocably changed by it and they're putting it in Kate Ancrum's books because I don't know what it is and I there's something very indescribable about her writing style and like her approach to storytelling and why it works so much for me but it just works. Icarus is about a character named Icarus who is an art thief and his father has been training him from a young age to be an art thief and to do these artistic forgeries and to steal from this rich man's house and it's kind of this really complicated story of like family trauma and dealing with this like emotional neglect and abuse in a way on his father's part. It's just such a beautiful, tender, and like painful but in a good way reading experience. Absolutely one of the most interesting and unique books that I've ever read and it definitely deals with everything that I tend to love in a book which deals with like loneliness and alienation and also sort of a found family and a really beautiful, painful, angsty but fantastic romance at the center of it and it just was so good in so many ways that I honestly I could go on forever and ever but I won't. It just was so good. It was so good. I definitely want more people to read it but at the same time I want to protect it and I don't want anybody to read it. I don't want anybody to look at it because it was just so made for me and I don't know if it's going to work for everyone else or if it's going to appeal to everyone else but it just did it for me so much. Okay the best sequel I read this year has to be The Sunshine Court by Nora Sakovic. This is a continuation of the All for the Game series. The All for the Game series is is a strange combination contemporary college sports story with the mafia and the yakuza involved and we're following this character named neil Jostin, who is a 
Eggsy player. Eggsy is the fictional sport that we're following in this narrative and he has recently been recruited for a college Eggsy team called the Foxes. I read it when I was in high school and so I kind of thought like I don't know if I'm gonna love it as much as an adult but going back into that world and experiencing it from a different point of view because we see the point of view of Jean Moreau, someone who has experienced extreme trauma and this is a story really about him healing and him being relocated to a new exit team in a new state where he can kind of live his life and heal in peace and move on from all of the trauma that he's experienced and I really don't feel like I'm explaining this series well you just have to, if you know you know I don't know if you know you know but I think that it was such a good sequel because I think many times when an author comes back to a long completed series and they choose to add something to it I don't often feel like the things that they have to add to it are really worthwhile like most of the time it's not worth your time it wasn't worth revisiting we could have kept it in the drafts you know what I'm saying but I definitely think that this really brought something so new to the series I think that Jean was such an interesting protagonist and his way of seeing the world was so drastically different than Neil's our protagonist in the main trilogy and so I think that we we gained a lot of knowledge and insight about the world even things that Neil has already told us like just seeing them through Jean's perspective added so much to the story I think so I feel like there was something so so rewarding about seeing Jean who is this like extremely tortured character experiencing goodness and love and healing even though his healing journey is slow and complicated and it was just so good so it was a great sequel in my opinion next question a new release you haven't read yet I think I'm gonna have to say running close to the wind by Alexandra Rowland this is a book by an author that I've enjoyed in the past one of my favorite books of 2023 was a taste of golden iron which was a standalone fantasy by this author and I loved it so much it was such a good fantasy romance and this is another fantasy romance this sort of involves a heist of sorts and it's a pirate story it sounds like my thing you know like it's fantasy it's poly there's pirates I think I'm gonna love it and I also really want to read Mistress of Lies by K.M. Enright and this book is another poly fantasy story. This is about a character named Shan who uses blood magic and she is trying to strengthen her powers as much as she can. She's taking over as the head of her family and she is out for blood and she's getting some revenge and this is also going to deal with her forming a polycule of some sort. I'm excited to read about it. I think it's going to be a good time. I hope she's like a really brutal ruthless protagonist because I haven't read enough protagonists like that this year and I miss it so I hope this is going to be a hit and yeah I'm really excited for it this is an August release all right my most anticipated release for the second half of the year is gonna have to be So Thirsty by Rachel Harrison this kind of is a random one I've never read anything by Rachel Harrison in the past but I was scrolling on NetGalley and I saw it and I was like oh my god I have to read this it's essentially about this woman who it's her birthday she sort of in a rut and her friend decides to like surprise her by doing something fun and spontaneous and so they end up um like in a bar in a hotel that they've you know never been in before it's something strange and new and fun but their lives are changed irrevocably when they both get turned into vampires and it's gonna have like crazy consequences and I feel like it's gonna explore this friendship and the consequences of like immortality and the experience of it and everything like that I'm very excited to read it because this has very much been a year of vampires for me. Now we're going to talk about some of my biggest disappointments of the year. It's been a really mid-year so everything has kind of been like eh, you know that was okay or like wow I really wasted my time and so because of that I feel like I've just experienced like disappointment after disappointment, a lot of boredom and just like so much like bleh in terms of my reading experiences definitely some extreme highs but also some very low lows and so it's been it's been a year it's been a year okay and some of my biggest disappointments would have to be number one we're going to say the vegetarian by han kang i really was very excited about reading this book because it is a very heavily praised and lauded like translated fiction work and so I was really excited to read it and I also had read a a little excerpt of this when I was in college in one of my like women's fiction classes I feel like when I was like a freshman or something and I remember the excerpt that I read it had an impact on me at the time so I was very intrigued to read the whole story 
it just wasn't anything special to me. I definitely think it had some interesting themes, but I don't think that the execution and the writing style really worked out for me so that's a shame but that was definitely a huge disappointment especially because I tried so hard with it and I was reading it for like months usually I would just quit I would just give up on a book but like I said it was a book that I had had in my mind that I was going to read it someday since I was a freshman in college and so it just felt like this was something that I had to complete like this was my personal Mount Everest and so I had to climb it I had to conquer it and I did but was it as rewarding as I wanted it to be? No, absolutely not. Another huge disappointment for me was An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. I have previously loved two of the S.T. Gibson books I've read in the past, A Dowry of Blood and also Evocation. Two incredible books. Truly, those books spoke to me so deeply. I love them so much. They were incredible and so there was just no doubt in my mind that I was going to adore An Education in Malice and that was absolutely not the case. An Education in Malice is this dark academia rivals to lovers story and it's also a Carmilla retelling and I just felt like Carmilla and Laura were so boring. They were such boring people and this narrative was just not at all as interesting as the previous stories that I've read by this author, I don't think that the character dynamics were anywhere near as interesting as the previous works I've read by the author. I don't think that the writing style was as beautiful and lush and sensuous as previous books that I've read by this author either. And this book was supposed to be like very sensual because it also deals sort of like some kinks and things like that like the characters are they're into some shit you know so it's it's supposed to really like be sexy and erotic and tantalizing in some way and it just very much was not and I was just so deeply unimpressed with everything that it turned out to be so this was just not at all a book for me huge 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 fantastic disappointment in many ways I'm also going to say stars in your eyes by case and calendar I don't even want to waste too much breath on this book but I think that the writing in it was truly juvenile and I think it was such a fan fucking tastic premise but the writing was not good. The writing was simply not up to par with how good the concept was for the story so I just like I can't think of a single good thing to say about it and so I'm going to say nothing at all. So anyway um the last disappointment is going to have to be Dune. I really 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 love the Dune movies. They're sort of like the peak of sci-fi action cinema to me in many ways and so reading the book it was just not at all a similar experience. I really really did not like Frank Herbert's writing style unfortunately. A few banger lines in it for sure like the litany against fear he ate that severely okay he devoured but the rest no. I was just not a huge fan of the way that the narrative was organized or just the writing style in general. It was very boring, very bleh, very mm. And I feel like the story is so interesting and it's so intricate and complex but there's just like a lack of flavor in the writing style so it was a really boring experience which was shocking to me in many ways. Um, but yeah, those are my biggest disappointments and let's get on to my biggest surprises. So my first big surprise is going to be Nevada by Imogen Benny. I joined a book club this year and this was the first book pick that I was like a part of the club for and this is a story about a trans woman living in New York kind of blowing up her relationship, blowing up her life and going on this crazy road trip to figure herself out. It's like nothing I've read before. It's very different structurally than most novels are and it ends on such an ambiguous note and I usually would say that I don't like stories that are deeply open-ended the way this one is but I really was surprised by how much I enjoyed it and how much conversation it started in the book club so it was like a really pleasant reading experience for me and I definitely enjoyed it. It gave me a lot to think about and I would recommend checking it out if you have not read it already. It's really interesting especially if you're like a literary fiction reader. I think it's a book that you would appreciate. So my next read is something that's going to be deeply unserious to many people. I can't overstate how good this book was to me and that is How for the Gargoyle by Catherine Moon. Now yes the title is silly the cover is silly, I know, I get it, but listen you guys, like listen, hear me out, okay? 
This book is so deeply beautiful. This is about a character named Hannah and Hannah gets attacked by a werewolf prior to the start of the story and so we meet Hannah in this support group for newly turned werewolves as they try to adjust to this new uh, experience in their life. It's a very complicated transition and our main character Hannah is not coping very well and this was such a surprisingly good book because Hannah while dealing with all of these biological changes she decides that she's going to kind of seek some comfort with a paid male companion and so her and Raph they end up having like a standing monthly appointment where she and he get together and they do what grown folks do and it's very fun and it's very sexy but it's also a very interesting avenue for healing her relationship with herself and this book ended up being so so beautiful because it navigates like the traumatic impacts of being attacked and violated the way that Hannah is. Obviously it's like this is a werewolf story, it's a paranormal romance, it's kind of unserious but I think that you know imagine being attacked in this way and your life changing so irrevocably afterwards. They grappled with that trauma in an interesting way and the healing and the the reconnection to self and learning to love yourself as this person that you are in the aftermath of a huge trauma. It's just something like really beautiful about seeing Hannah just go through that journey of learning to love herself again after experiencing something so hard and so traumatic and the relationship between her and Raph was just so so beautiful like it's a hit it's a banger I loved it and I would highly recommend it if you are looking for a spicy romance that has some real substance to it like it's so good favorite new to me author I think I'm gonna have to pick Regina Black I read this book earlier this year and it was a really fun like age gap romance and it was very very messy it was very messy it was very ridiculous but it was highly highly entertaining and I just had a really great time reading it so I would definitely read more by this author in the future and it was just like such a breeze I, I feel like I read it in a single day and I told you guys that I've been struggling a lot with reading with things keeping my attention with you know all that kind of stuff and so the fact that this book like caught my attention I was able to read it so quickly and I enjoyed it so thoroughly definitely Regina Black is up there on my new like faves so far and the next question is favorite fictional crushes so usually I have a lot of answers for this question but I think I'm just gonna have to go with Eli from Not In Love by Ali Hazelwood he was just so iconic like he was obsessed he was devoted he was down bad i think in my goodreads review for this i called him like a stage five clinger and a level 10 munch and that's exactly what he was and i need him in my life desperately newest favorite characters i already have like given you my whole spiel about how much i love jean uh from the sunshine court but i love him so much I he's my baby for sure so he will be up there I also want to say maybe Kaladin from the way of kings I love him so much there is a pattern between me deeply loving a character and the character being a long-suffering young man who has experienced so much trauma like a fictional sad boy is going to do it for me every single time and I loved Kaladin. I thought he was so cool. I thought he was really interesting and angsty and I appreciated everything about him so I definitely enjoyed him. I definitely think he's my favorite character so far in the Stormlight Archive. Okay a book that made me cry. I'm gonna have to go with Post Traumatic by Chantel V. Johnson. Um, this is a story about a young lawyer named Vivian who is someone who has experienced extreme trauma in her childhood and she has sort of repressed it for the majority of her life and things are starting to resurface um, as she's hitting her 30s and she's still single and she's sort of lonely living in the big city and this is sort of about how her old trauma and pain starts to bubble up and she's really spiraling very badly and I thought it was particularly emotional and it hit really hard for me because I think that especially in the black community and in marginalized communities there's this sense that a black woman is meant to be strong no matter what no matter what she's gone through no matter what her feelings are and she really has to sort of push down all of the feelings that she's having and 
she just has to strive and achieve and you know that's the way that she conquers her demons is by being successful and you know all of these surface and like material things are supposed to be the markers of success and black women are meant to strive for those things and they're not allowed moments to break down and to be seen for the pain that they're experiencing and truly comforted and i think that that's what we see happening with this main character vivian where she feels that she doesn't have this space or the um community around her to appreciate the pain that she's in and to validate her and comfort her in the ways that she needs to make her feel safe and to help her actually like move forward from this trauma and so it was just something that was so painful about it and it felt so personal um and so this book definitely made me cry i would highly recommend it to anyone who feels that they are in an emotional place to read a story that is deeply triggering at times we are very close in her mindset while she is spiraling heavily and she's dealing with an eating disorder and things like that so it's really intense really intense but also a very beautiful very necessary story in many ways and vivian is a really complicated character but i just couldn't help but just cry for her and want to like reach out and hug her because she really needed a hug and yeah so it was definitely a cry worthy book for me a book that made me happy on a different note is gonna have to be cupid calling by vienno oniomo this is a reality tv romance and it's sort of set on like a knockoff the bachelorette type show so we have these two contestants on a the fake bachelorette and they're going they're trying to woo you know this woman but in the process they start falling for each other i already really enjoy vienna oniomo's writing and so i definitely thought that it was like it was a fun easy breezy read and i definitely enjoyed it it made me really happy um i love the conversations that the characters have as they're getting to know each other and like the progression of their relationship was just really sweet and i enjoyed it a whole lot i also think that it was like the perfect timing for me to read it and get into it because I've slowly but surely been like falling in love with reality dating TV and I feel like if there is a Love Island USA season 6 shape hole in your life you should read this book. I don't know. That's just me. My favorite book to screen adaptation that I saw this year well one I already kind of mentioned Dune. I think the Dune films are just so incredible and Dune 2 was just it was a masterpiece on so many different levels so there's that so bones and all crazy that both of those have timothy chalamet in them but bones and all an incredible film incredible luca guaranino your your power okay just truly a master behind the camera i love that film so much and it definitely something shifted for me with watching that movie it was just like it was so good it was so good it was so fucked up it was fantastic i really want to make a video about bones and all in the future so i won't say too much but i love that film it's absolutely beautifully shot the performances are incredible the script is so good i have read the script and watched the movie at least three times it's fantastic okay so also interview with the vampire the tv show this show is so so incredible it's truly an incredible show. If you enjoy gothic narratives, if you enjoy vampire media, you absolutely have to watch this. It's so fantastic. The writing is so good. The performances are amazing. And it's just like the perfect adaption, in my opinion, because it takes uh, interesting source material, but it definitely expands on it and makes a lot of changes, a lot of really big changes. Like it does race spend the characters and things like that. And I think that it does something very important with those changes by making like the main character Louis black and how his experiences as a black man are playing into his overall experience as being turned into a vampire as is playing into this relationship that he has with the start like it's just so good and i think that it does everything that i would want an adaption to do i think that you know we already have the book we already have the book so and we already have previous adaptions of the book so i think that if you're going to do another adaption it has to be something something new that we haven't seen before with this material and i think that interview with the vampire just does that so well so i'm deeply obsessed i highly recommend it fantastic stuff 
all right the next question is the most beautiful book that you bought or received this year and i'm gonna have to say the sky on fire by jen lyons i really love this this is a um like dragon fantasy book and i like how the dragon is like superimposed onto this mountain landscape like it's just really beautiful i love the color scheme in it and it definitely it projects a vibe i love when a book cover can really capture the vibe of a story just so perfectly in a single image and i think this one does it very well and the last question is what are some books that you need to read before the end of the year so i already mentioned the sky on fire which is beautiful and i definitely need to read it this is a dragon inspired fantasy and it's about this character named Honorod and she's sort of on the run and pretty much in this world like the dragons are the rulers and humans are sort of under their power and sort of living at their mercy and our main character Honorod has angered one of the most powerful dragons and so she's kind of on the run and in hiding and this is a story about this group of people like banding together to find her. I need to read this. I also need to read Words of Radiance, the second book in the Stormlight Archive series because as I already mentioned, I love me some Kaladin. I want to reconnect with him. I want to find out more about what's going on in this world and I also need to read it before I actually forget everything that is happening in this world because it's been a few months since I read The Way of Kings. So I do need to get into this before I forget all of the lore in the world building. Um, and yeah because there is so much and it's it's such a long series um so i just i need to start it sooner rather than later and get back into it and reconnect with dalinar and Navani. i want to see how their relationship is developing i want more from jasna i want more from dalinar Navani, adolin kaladin and shallan i guess i'm not a huge fan of her but you know and i guess the final thing i really want to get into is little rot by akwiki and mezzi i am going into this book kind of sight unseen i really don't know what it's about i i know that it's about like a character who goes through a breakup and like is spiraling and getting into some nefarious activity but beyond that i don't know too much but i'm excited to find out oh that is my mid-year freak out tag done i talked a lot but it was great chatting with you guys again i really missed it so much and i hope you guys missed me as much as i missed you so let me know in the comments below some of your best and worst reads of the year so far i would love to hear all about them thank you so much to book of the month for sponsoring this video be sure to check them out at the link in my description use that code firefly to get your first box for 9.99 and yeah I will see you all in my next video.